What's up guys, the snowman here back with another Grand Slam draw preview today. It's my men's Roland Garros draw analysis. Uh, please check out my women's draw preview too if you're interested, but the second major of the year is sure to be an unpredictable one. Several key storylines which we'll get into as we uh, dissect some of the big matchups. Unfortunately, there will be one glaring omission from this men's field. The 14-time Roland Garros champ Rafa Nadal pulling out last week. The body just isn't quite ready yet to compete. Sounds like Rafa is hoping to be ready for Davis Cup late in the year and then if his health cooperates make 2024 his final season on tour but we still have a whole host of stars on display in Paris as we pull up the first quarter of the draw. This is the top section. Carlos Alcaraz recently taking the number one ranking back from Novak Djokovic last week in Rome. The 20-year-old Spaniard off to an unimaginable start in 2023. As of right now, he has more titles than defeats this season. 30-3 and three is his record. Four titles, including Indian Wells and Madrid. Alcaraz starting his season a bit late because of a right leg injury, had to miss the Aussie Open. So this is Carlos's first major since winning that maiden slam in New York last year. And the tennis world hype around him just continues to build he's already a super duper star with very few on-court flaws if any uh, it'll be interesting to watch a lot of people are talking about the opportunity in this draw without Rafa while well, Alcaraz is the number one betting favorite ahead of Djokovic and others nothing crazy in Carlos's first week of the draw starts with a qualifier and with Shapovalov being well out of form I don't see anything too threatening in the first three rounds number 17 Musetti or 14 Nori would be a battle in the fourth Fourth round, Musetti with a career win over Djokovic and Monte Carlo, and uh, Nori has already beaten Alcaraz in a clay final this season. Moving down the section, number 10, FAA versus Fonini will be a premier matchup. A quartet of Americans here as well, including number 24, Sebi Corda, who is out for three months with a wrist problem, hasn't won a match since January, and that could open things up for the five-seed Stefano Tsitsipas, the third favorite in Paris, according to the odds. Excellent start to his 2023, was 10-0, lost in the Aussie Open final to Djokovic, uh, had a shoulder injury that was causing him discomfort in February and March, but... Steph is 100% now playing very consistently on the clay, dictating play with his forehand. Semifinals in Rome, losing to his old nemesis, Daniel Medvedev. I wouldn't bet against him. Uh, in terms of talent, this first section, probably the most loaded. We'll see if Alcaraz is up for the challenge. Him versus Tsitsipas would be awesome. Our second section is led by the three seed, Novak Djokovic. Probably not too ecstatic that he's in the same half as Alcaraz. He started out the year 17-0, winning the Aussie Open after dropping just one set the entire tournament that equaled Rafa's 22 major singles titles for the most men's all time a sensational start but not as many highlights the last few months just five and four in his last nine matches uh, most recently getting handled by Holger Runa in Rome Djokovic also dealing with a slight elbow issue he's been wearing a sleeve on the right arm uh, we know that Novak is a different beast when it comes to the majors although he's 36 now only two players 36 or older have ever won majors Majors. That's Ken Rosewall and Roger Federer. A lookout for Marton Fucevic in the second round. He's a player that can run all day and grind you down. Perhaps the eccentric Davidovich Fokina for Djokovic in round three. And it doesn't get much easier as your eyes pan down. You see guys like Bautista Agu, Goffin, Hubie Hercoc. RBA has defeated Novak three times, albeit all on hard courts. Number 11, Karen Hachinov has made the semifinals at the last two majors. Plays well on all surfaces. I'm excited decided to watch the 2015 French Open champ Stan Wawrinka. He's got a first round contest versus Ramos Vinolia, someone he's 7-0 all time against. And then at the bottom, number seven, Andre Rublev, having another consistent season as usual. First Masters 1000 title in Monte Carlo. Took out some heavy hitters there in Hachinov, Fritz, and Runa. Starting to look like Rublev can contend for the biggest titles on the tennis calendar. Uh, with this draw, he should be getting to the fourth round, bare minimum. May get tricky there if he has to face his countryman, Hachinov, and or Djokovic in the quarters. Djokovic, of course, the uh, on-paper favorite to escape from this quarter. Section number three is the four seed Casper Ruud's quarter probably the section to be in if you're outside the top four yes Casper had the great run last year to the uh, French Open final but his form has been shaky in 2023 
His semifinal appearance in Rome was just his second tournament winning more than one match this season. And just this year, Rude has lost to players ranked 70, 97, 100, and 125 in the world. So some real clunkers, but as I said, a solid run in Roma. I don't know if we can uh, call it Rude's section though, because at the very top, Holger Runa is the sixth seed, and he's the prohibitive favorite here. The 20-year-old Dane coming off a pair of Masters 1000 finals in Monte Carlo in Rome. Runa proving to be a big match player, had won seven consecutive matches against top five players before losing to Medvedev in the Rome final. Fun fact about Runa, he's one of three active players to win multiple matches and have a winning record against Novak Djokovic. He just defeated him in Rome. Uh, the other two players on that list, Yuri Vesely and Nick Kyrgios. Runa is starting to add some tennis IQ things to his game. In addition to the massive weapons and stamina, Runa and Rude met in a memorable Roland Garros quarterfinal last year. Rude winning on that day, but Runa just won their encounter a week ago in Rome. He's got the upper hand, in my opinion. Elsewhere in this third quarter, the 9 seed Taylor Fritz playing solid clay court tennis. We've got a pair of 30 six-year-old Frenchman in Gaël Monfils and Richard Gasquet, uh, both hoping to please the home crowd for what could be the last time, you never know. Two other names to watch, number 23, Francisco Sarundolo. He's dangerous when hot, can scorch the forehand in the mid-80s throughout entire matches, recently beat Sinner in Rome, so lethal when he's thumping from the back of the court, quality shot variety too. And number 21, John Leonard Struff, the highest seeded German in this draw, not Sacha Zverev. Uh, some fantastic results lately, namely a Cinderella run to the final in Madrid after losing and qualifying, but uh, getting in the main draw as a lucky loser. This is a really fun section. Flipping over to the fourth and final quarter of the draw at the bottom, we have the surprising two seed, Daniil Medvedev, who all of a sudden loves clay. He had to win Rome last week just to pass Djokovic and move up to number two. Uh, otherwise, the Serbian would be in this spot, but just like that, Medvedev has carried the hardcourt form over to the dirt. Before 2023, the Russian was 18 and 23 overall on clay. This year, he's 10 and 2, moving exponentially better, sliding with confidence, defending how he does on hard courts. He's been the best player this year so far. Five titles, including a couple more 1,000 level ones in Miami and Rome. Uh, do I think he can win seven best of five set matches on clay over two weeks? Probably not, but it's not as inconceivable as it was about a month ago. It's a very favorable draw for Medvedev too, especially to the quarters. Number 15, Borna Chorch, might be the biggest obstacle in his way. Also, shout out to Dominic Team, the former two-time French Open finalist. I'm always dreaming of a deep run for him. Up above, some familiar seeds in Tiafo, Zverev, and Dimitrov. Yannick Sinner, the eighth seed in this section. I've got a lot of stock in Sinner. The young Italian has made tremendous strides in the last half year, both physically and uh, with his play on court, defending at a world-class level. I think he's the next new major winner on the men's side. Just needs to put it together over two weeks and have his body hold up. And maybe this isn't a crazy prediction, but I think we get a first-time major finalist at this event. Whether it's Sinner or Runa, one of those guys will bust through to the final. There's just too much opportunity in the bottom half. Uh, Sinner may have to overcome a head-to-head -head matchup against Medvedev, where he's 0-6 so far in his career, but I've got confidence in Sinner. Again, here Runa makes the final from the bottom, and then things just might open up for Djokovic on top. Alcaraz still the favorite, but he may have to go through Sitsipas. Uh, I can't wait to see how it all shakes out. Thanks a lot for watching my men's Roland Garros preview video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. Uh, please check out my women's preview as well, and uh, hope you enjoy the tennis over the next couple of weeks in Paris. Cheers!